Shalom saints. Okay, so I took a couple days off after reading through the book of Revelation. And um, even though I think it's day four since my last reading, um, it's been rather lonely not doing a live reading for y'all. And I've been pondering as to which book I wanted to read next. And do I go through the Psalms or the Proverbs or do I go through all the Gospels? Like, what do I do? And so I thought today um, I would actually read a psalm that the Lord gave me in 93. And so in 1993, um, part of my testimony is there's a, apart from the human trafficking, there's in addition other things that happened. And it sounds absolutely crazy simply because when you are a part of a system, you get exploited and random crazy bad things happen to try to take you down um, when you're not compliant to the system in which you've been programmed to uh, be compliant to. And so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will put links uh, down below in the description to help you understand what I mean by the system. Uh, because there's a multitude of kids like me, hundreds of thousands of kids that were put into this system. And um, they were programmed to do various things, breeder programs, Delta programs, theater programs, you name it. And so um, I was a defiant child. I was non-compliant to the system. Um, a good kid. I feared God. And part of fearing God, I also accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior as a toddler. So that was my saving grace. However, it just took me years, decades to acknowledge that I was a part of this systematic process that was ran by Luciferians and I had no idea I was in it and my life wasn't making sense until I realized just in recent years by the grace of God a childhood friend who did a great deal of research because she's an investigative reporter and this is like totally her thing she started helping me put the pieces together and it was just like here I thought I just had one heck of a life where people just exploited me for fun because people are evil and it's like no I'm a part of a system and part of being exploited repeatedly and near death attempts on your life and bad things happening is a part of conditioning you, keeping you in the system for a much greater Luciferian agenda. And so anyways, with that, go ahead and grab your Bibles if you want to read with me. Psalm 91. Um, and again, I'm going to read from my Jerusalem Bible just because I like, I like the way it flows a little bit better. And so, um, and again, I will include links in the description box below regarding the system. I will say this, be prayed up wear the full armor of God. If you choose to click on those links and read it, if you're a part of the system, definitely pray. Maybe have somebody with you that can help walk you through it. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, again, you want to be prayed up wearing the full armor of God because it is not for the faint at heart, the links that I'm going to be including. Okay, so with that, shall we read? Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You can say to Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. He rescues you from the snares and fowls, hoping to destroy you. He covers you with his feathers, and you find shelter underneath his wings. You need not fear the terrors of night, the arrow that flies in the daytime, the plague that stalks in the dark, the scourge that wrecks havoc in broad daylight. Though a thousand fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, you yourself will remain unscathed with his faithfulness for shield and buckler. You have only to look around to see how the wicked are rapid. You who can say, Yahweh, my refuge, and make the most high your fortress. No distress can overtake you, no plague Come near your tent. He will put you in his angel's charge to guard you everywhere you go. They will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. And you will tread on lion and adore, trample on savage lions and dragons. I rescue all who cling to me. I protect whoever knows my name. I answer everyone who invokes me. I am with them when they are in trouble. I bring them safety and honor. I give them life long and full and show them how I can save. Psalm 91 verse 1 through 26. So 
my testimony that is attached to Psalm 91, as I mentioned um, in the beginning, has to do with not just the human trafficking aspect of my testimony, but a event that occurred where I was kidnapped, brutally beaten and raped. And I just hunkered down in prayer and I cried out on the name of the Lord. And in this prayer where I cried out on the name of the Lord, I just, I petitioned him and said, please don't do this to my mommy. I just had a great deal of compassion for what it would be like as a parent to lose a child in such a horrific manner. And I didn't want my mother to live the rest of her life knowing that this is how her daughter died. And I know that might sound, oh, you're so self-righteous. No, because my mother was not the type of person <laughs> that was a mother. <laughs> she was completely just alienated, checked out, abusive. And I strongly believe that that prayer came from the depths of my soul by the Holy Spirit. That was something the Holy Spirit led me into doing. And we know that the Holy Spirit cries out in grumbling and travail on our behalf, interceding for us when we don't know what to pray. And that was one of those moments where I cried out in travail, praying. And ironically, that was just, that was the way the Holy Spirit cried out. And it was really a battle cry for my mom because it was my mom that got me in that situation to begin with and because it was a pleasing prayer that was cried out to the lord i mean obviously it was all 100 percent the holy spirit <laughs> um god answers when our prayers are pleasing and so i had no fear of dying and that might be weird to say it that way i had no fear at all of dying i'd already lived through enough horrific trauma by this time in 93. I was roughly 14 years of age. If I died, I died. <laughs> um, but I didn't want my mother to live the rest of her life with that burden, that mourning, that, that loss, that guilt of knowing I died due to her actions leading up to this kidnapping and rape. And so a quite a bit of time had lapsed from the start of this vicious assault, this brutal beating that led up to the rape which would then lead to me being sodomized. And I know that that's graphic, but I share this because I believe that this all, every aspect of this assault explains why I came to know various aspects of the Lord's character, his, his character attributes. And so I cried out on this prayer. I immediately feel my spirit being just swooped up. There was a complete separation between the physical realm, my body, and my soul, my spirit. And I was in, ironically, in a dark place. The rape was happening in a, like, abandoned warehouse with light coming through. However, when the Lord had swooped up my spirit, it was dark. And most people would be like, well, why not in the light? That makes the most sense. Well, the reason it was dark was he had covered my eyes with his wings. The Lord had sheltered me. Like like how you would take a toddler and just shelter them in a hug. He had sheltered me with his wings where, like a chicken, takes takes her little chicklets, you know? Um, but he was sheltering me so I couldn't see anything, but he was comforting me and there was peace. And even though I could hear, I could feel, I was very much aware of what was happening in the physical. He had sheltered me as written in Psalm 91. And so with that, um, Part of the sheltering was uh, that verse, the next verse that comes over over me is, do not fear man who can hurt flesh and blood, um, but fear God who is the keeper of your soul. Matthew 10, 28, I believe. I don't want to misquote that because it's a very important verse. Um, do, not, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Um, yeah, that sounds like a harsh verse for such a moment, but um, no fear in the physical of me dying, none whatsoever. And one of the most beautiful things was there was a separation of being, even though I was completely aware of everything taking place, like I knew the moment things went from me being physically beaten, having a knife to my throat, to then it advancing to a rape, to it going to the sodomy, like I was very much aware, but I knew I was safe and sound with the Lord and I could not feel any pain. Just... Absolutely amazing the way the Lord works. And so before he actually released me back down to my body, he had commanded me as he was releasing me down to forgive them. Yeah, like, whoa, I just, I just lived through like hell. And here the Lord is saying, forgive them. So with that.
So the Lord released my soul back down to my body, commanding me to forgive them. And I'm lying face down when I return and I, I get up and I'm being commanded. I'm being prompted, get up, get dressed, go. It's time. All while having this conviction to forgive them. And so I, I turn over, I look for my clothing. I begin getting dressed. The individuals are hunkered down off into the corner, froze. And when I say they're hunkered down, froze, they're hunkered down, froze, captivated with fear written all over their face. The look on their eyes is unlike anything I've ever seen. I never want to see it again. When I looked at their face, I knew immediately upon looking at them, because not only was I being flooded with just this bold, courageous, fearless, get up like a line, get dressed, get your things and go, forgive these people. I had such a strength that surpasses like any of my understanding. Uh, the strength that I had was like a counter to the fear that they had. And I'm hoping that makes sense. And so I immediately knew that my, my guardian angel was with me. I could feel his presence behind me and he was saying, get up, let's go, it's time. But even though I couldn't see him, I could just sense the presence of the angel. I knew that they could based on the look on their face, they could see my angel. And all I can say is that, that alone, whew. I got a taste of Abba's righteous indignation. And again, as I was reading through Revelation and you hit, I believe it's Revelation, is it, somebody might have to correct me on this, um, 18, 13, uh, where it talks about um, Babylon's fall and the, you know, the gold and the myrrh and the frankincense and like all, all the things that they sell and they get to the human, the human slaves, like that hit me hard. That hit me so hard because I'm being reminded this is God's judgment about to come on the whole world. And it's mentioning human save, slaves and it is hitting me in the spirit as sound of freedom is being released. And I'm thinking about all these children that are being human trafficked and kidnapped and raped and used for satanic ritual abuse. And part of my testimony is going through satanic ritual abuse at the hands of my own mother of all people and corrupt law enforcement. And I'm like just getting reminded because yes, the stuff is absolutely horrible. The stuff that is happening is absolutely horrible to our children. But what's more frightening is God's righteous indignation. His righteous indignation far exceeds any of the evil that is taking place in this hour. And um, I just, I think about that right now and I just tremble inside. I tremble inside because even though I could feel God's love and compassion and him commanding me to forgive them and his mercy and his grace, I equally felt his anger. I felt his wrath. And I never want to feel that again. And I honestly, like in all seriousness, um, to those that kidnapped and raped and sodomized me, I don't want them to feel God's wrath. Like I want them to understand God's mercy and grace and forgiveness and love and compassion so that they will turn and repent and, and be saved, that they don't have to feel his wrath. And it has been my hope since I was a little girl that should they have been picked up and put in prison if they ever, ever were found. And by the way, for whatever reason, I heard the girl's name. I remembered the girl's name. Her name was Cece. So if ever by the grace of God, she comes across this, Cece, please turn to God and repent of your ways. Repent of your sins and know that you can be forgiven for what you did. Because I, I felt God's forgiveness and compassion, not just for me, for you, for, for, for you and everybody involved in the situation, just as for my, my mother as well. Like I felt it wasn't just for me. What God was showing me wasn't just for me, all those good attributes. They weren't just for me. And I don't think that he let me feel his wrath, his, his indignation for the situation. It, it, I don't know how to describe it other than, y'all, he's coming back soon. He's coming back. And that's really what the basis of me sharing this is. He's coming back. And no matter what you've done, no matter what you've done, I know based off my own experience, he will forgive you. And it has always been my hope that the individuals involved in this situation, that they did get picked up, that they did go to prison, and that somebody was faithful to serve the Lord and do a prison ministry, that they might hear the good news, the gospel, and accept Christ Jesus into their heart and be changed. It is honestly my hope and my prayer that that, that process has already taken place and they've already turned. But if they have not turned, Cece, if you come across this, please just... 
just accept Christ into your heart and know that you are forgiven. You just have to turn. You just have to repent, okay? Confess your sins and, and accept Christ into your heart. And so, and for anybody that might be watching this that might have been a pedophile, a rapist, whatever, you've, you've dabbled in satanic ritual abuse, whatever it is you've done, nothing, nothing, nothing is too, too beyond his scope of being able to forgive you and cleanse you of that unrighteousness. One drop of Christ's blood could heal and redeem all of humanity. That is how powerful the blood of Christ is. And so, um, and when I say could, it can, it will. It's just up to you using your free will to accept that redemptive process. And so um, with that, there's a lot that I've left out in regards to my testimony. But really, this is just a, a plea for those that have yet to turn to Christ and, and accept him into their heart to please do so now. And for those watching um, that are in Christ, that are covered by the blood of Christ, that are sealed and saved and born again, I, I ask this, um, it's too far beyond us to be um, justice warriors in this hour. Don't, don't, don't be a Peter, don't be a justice warrior. Um, this has been my hill since 93 and I will die on this hill and I'm having to constantly learn new ways to march up this hill and to take my stance because things are constantly shifting here in the physical and the Lord has just finally brought me to a place where he's just like, you can go up against the courts, you can expose the evil, you can point the finger and be like, this prosecutor is dirty and this DA is corrupt and this judge is a part of the problem and this, you know, particular boots on the ground law enforcement uniformed officer had a hand in it. Like the human trafficking problem, y'all, it is not just a third world country, kids being shipped in on cargo ships to be human trafficked. It is a in your backyard problem, Okay. I endured what I endured in a very small town, a population of 2,193 people in my community in Boundary County, Idaho, North Idaho. How is that a kid living in a small town up in the hills in the country could endure the same type of brutality, satanic ritual, human trafficking as in these big cities, these several countries? And so I ask that everybody, again, that is sealed and saved, born again, um, your greatest service to these kids in this hour it's prayer. It's prayer. It's not posting on social media. It's it's not um, it's not being a justice warrior. It's it's prayer. <laughs> prayer, love, forgiveness, and prayer. Uh, specifically in prayer, praying for these children. Praying for these children that when they are enduring the satanic ritual abuse, when they're enduring the beatings and the rape. Um, praying specifically for their souls, for the Lord to intercede as in Psalm 91, that their souls be protected. He's the keeper of their souls. And in that split moment, um, there's a point when these children, and I know I've experienced it. And so I'm speaking from experience when I say this, because a lot of people haven't endured traumatic incidences like this, where they, they endure a trauma in the spirit realm. And so these Satanists, these Luciferians, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And they know that the trauma creates trauma bonds in the spirit realm. And a child, whether they be three years of age, four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, there's a split moment in this act of trauma where they can split. And they're either going to split to Christ, God Almighty, for they're going to run to him for help, or they should be one of these children that is intended for use later on down the road and they're not intended to be used as a sacrifice with an expiration date um, if they are of the right bloodline and they've got the right attributes in which the Luciferians are looking for. They'll keep them alive. They'll condition them to grow up to be Luciferians themselves. And so when I say um, pray for their souls, that when that trauma bond that the Luciferians are attempting to create to snare them to the enemy, um, pray that they, in their moment of that separation in the spirit realm, um, that they, they run to Christ Jesus. They run to Christ Jesus and they don't, they don't turn their back on God Almighty because there, there's a moment, there's a confrontation with the Lord. And it's traumatic because it can happen at a very young age based on the level of trauma that these children receive. And so um, my first encounter with the Lord, I, I literally was like, 
three years of age. And so um, it can happen very, very young. And that's why um, if you are a child abuser, if you lay your hands on your children, it'd be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and be thrown out into the sea because it's what you're doing in the spiritual realm. So, but there's forgiveness for you too. And when I say there's a confrontation with the Lord, I mean there's an encounter with the Lord. There's a spiritual realm confrontation where free will is enacted, even in a, even in a young child. Um, and so, um, pray for their souls. Pray that that they they run to Jesus, that they run to Jesus, and that they not harden their hearts and just succumb to the evil tactics of the enemy. And so. With that, you all, um, if you have questions, go ahead and just leave me a comment, okay? Um, I would love to help answer any questions that somebody might have. There are hundreds upon thousands of kids here in the U.S. that have been programmed. I'm going to reiterate this. They've been abducted against their will. They've been programmed. They probably have no idea. They have a false memory inserted. They don't know. They've got strongholds. They've got bondage. I'm so against deliverance ministries. However, the way to get delivered from these is the word of God. You have to use the Holy Scriptures. You can do a self-deliverance walking through um, these trauma bonds with the word of God by yourself in a season of solitude with the Lord. And so if you have traumas, by all means, Genesis to Revelation, cover to cover, read the entire whole counsel of God, and that will help set you free. Um, and to my prayer warriors, please pray for these children. Um, and if you're going to look at the links below, please err on the side of caution. They are extremely graphic and not for the faint at heart. Uh, so with that, always remember to suit up, boot up every single day wearing the whole armor of God. Always be praying in the spirit being covered by the blood of Christ. And until next time, get your rapture robes ready because he truly is coming back soon. And again, I remind you, err on the side of caution, reading the links below. Um, however, if you really want to know the spiritual battle in which is taking place, um, we talk about human trafficking. We talk about corrupt politicians. It's so far greater, you guys. It's so far greater. Some of us, you know, we talk about UFO and alien abductions and the Nephilim and all that. But when you actually see how it's all, it's all. We talk about mind control, MK Ultra, monarch programming. When you read the links below and you realize it is all a part of a system, the beast system, and you start connecting the dots, it, it makes a lot more sense. And you will never look at the world the same way again. You will have eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, so with that, I love y'all. Stay armored up. Till next time. Bye.